much to organizers for inviting me and I will very nicely follow the speakers before me uh, because uh, as uh, Jirka has already announced I worked also with uh, IBM and I was hired by Fred Jelinek who was initially mentioned and I know Jim Baker and I know all the history about Dragon but uh, don't worry uh, I won't speak about, uh, I won't talk about speak recognition. I will focus on something which is these days uh, called uh, intelligent personal assistance and it is a topic which I believe resonates uh, today uh, in the IT or in, in the community uh, you are sort of representing. Uh, so I skip the agenda, you will see. Uh, what I'll be talking about uh, during my presentation. So, first of all, uh, we already have uh, several intelligent uh, personal assistants. Actually, I have chosen the name uh, because this is uh, how these agents are called in Wikipedia. Uh, but if you really look uh, on the web, uh, you will find more than 100 different acronyms or synonyms or uh, whatever we would call it for uh, this kind of agents which are helping us. So I would mention the most uh, uh, well-known, which is Apple Siri, Google Now, uh, Microsoft Cortana, and uh, recently or for another two years, Amazon Echo, which is actually an appliance. The first three are running on uh, cell phones and or on smartphones, and smartphones are uh, typically uh, the most uh, used uh, hardware or uh, appliance where we use these uh, APIs. But uh, of course, it's uh, not only this because uh, uh, there are many appliances uh, running on the web uh, or applications or robots or whatever. So I will, uh, in this presentation, uh, discuss uh, use cases and then architecture, and I will also uh, mention uh, what we do uh, at, the Czech, at the local university and uh, uh, discuss a uh, few details about the architecture. Uh, so first of all, what is the uh, basic definition? Uh, the basic definition is uh, that the uh, intelligent personal assistants, I will use uh, just the word assistant, are uh, applications or appliances uh, which try to help people uh, to solve their needs, uh, to uh, serve uh, during their uh, everyday life, uh, to answer questions and ultimately autonomously work on their behalf, which is uh, probably some uh, kind of robots or some kind of appliances. You can imagine, for example, a coffee maker and you uh, get to your kitchen or and the coffee maker is equipped with a camera so it recognizes who is approaching the coffee maker and says something, hi Joe, do you want the coffee the same way, the coffee the same way as yesterday and you say yes or uh, no or something and then uh, the magic will happen and I think that's uh, the future but it's not that distant future because uh, there are these days in work already uh, devices uh, which uh, uh, put together cameras, Wi-Fi, and microphones, and uh, they have a size of a cube of a edge of one millimeter, and these things uh, do not need too much energy, and uh, there will be probably in many, many uh, things we have in our house, in cars, and everywhere. To achieve this goal, IPA uh, needs to communicate uh, to, and needs to be connected to some source of information which is obviously today a uh, cloud. Uh, IPA uh, segments. So we meet, uh, I, I have mentioned that just the uh, most important uh, three types, but uh, we can meet with uh, assistants uh, in cars. Uh, as specifically cars are very much behind because uh, typically uh, when you buy a car which is equipped with speech recognition you get a uh, user's manual and there are like two three pages of commands 
uh, which you need to memorize and if you don't memorize them uh, the car would not do anything so if you say open the window next to the driver uh, the machine may understand but if you say just open the left window the machine won't understand so that's really a user interface uh, which is very difficult and uh, mostly doesn't work then uh, we have variables uh, you know the uh, Apple uh, watch and you can talk to it you can uh, do uh, calendaring and many different things then we have chatbots uh, you probably know the story uh, I probably shouldn't mention, you know everybody what I mean. Uh, then uh, home automation, obviously lots of devices in our house, robots, appliances, etc. Oops, what happened? Okay, so uh, IPA functionality. Uh, the basic functionality we know from our cell phones uh, is the alert, alerting and reminding. Uh, phones are keep telling us uh, 10 minutes before the meeting, wake up, go there. Uh, the second thing uh, which is already used in many of these devices is something what we call command control. This is typically what's happening in the car where you can uh, direct the car uh, to do something or some of the uh, parts of the car to set it up, etc. Uh, the next thing in the hierarchy or in the difficulty is a front end for information retrieval engine. Uh, the, the best example is Google Now, where today you can in many languages and you can also mix the languages so you can query the search and it. Uh, response mostly correctly if you are not in a railway station when there is a coming a train uh, obviously the noise is so high that even a person standing next to you won't understand uh, then a simple factoid question is a next step factoid questions are like uh, what's the population of Brazil and this is something what uh, the engines are capable of uh, today and uh, do provide reasonable answers. Uh, then as I said already chatbots, avatars, etc. And then uh, the more and more ambitious projects like uh, uh, robo advisors uh, there are robo uh, typically the word robo advisors is used in the field of stock market and there are no more than five, I think like seven or almost ten applications where you can, I, uh, you can ask the robot or you have to pay for it. But uh, if you pay for it, the robots will give you an advice of what stock to buy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, if you bought all of them and try to ask the same question, each of them gives a different answer. Uh, and. Uh, Maybe, I don't know if it's the sign of uncertainty on the stock market or unability of the robots, but uh, that's the kind or that's the thing. And uh, the last uh, I put on the list is suggesting uh, or uh, qualified decision making, etc. Certainly, uh, we can imagine that uh, in the nearest future, some of these intelligent uh, assistants will be a member of board of directors in companies such as uh, Microsoft and others because uh, this member will know much more than any other member but obviously unless uh, the previous speaker solves the world or conquer the world this, this robot probably won't have the associative thinking or the capability to put these things together won't have intuition and other qualities uh, which are typical for uh, leaders of these big uh, companies. Next thing, uh, how do we communicate? I think that uh, it has been touched uh, by both of the previous uh, speakers and uh, I just uh, prepare a uh, small window into the history. Uh, in the previous time, uh, people have met, they shook hands and they made a deal. And obviously they communicate. Uh, then call centers appeared and the language stays there or is there. Uh, 
the same way as when we meet together, but we do the business remotely because of credit cards and shipping, com shipping companies. Then the next step where internet businesses, and we know uh, Amazon or, or the other, where you do the order and you do it again using language, not necessarily voice, but you type or you click what you want, uh, then you pull out the credit card and uh, pay and uh, the thing is delivered. The next step, uh, which is uh, the latest, ah, 10 minutes only, okay. <laughs> the next step is, uh, are the new agents like uh, WeChat, which is in China, uh, very uh, uh, similar to sending SMS messages, agents on Facebook like the AIM agent, or Alexa, where you can say uh, on Alexa, uh, I, I put them there an example which is recently mentioned in many articles on the web, Alexa call Uber, uh, which is a, a fantastic thing because uh, the system knows all your details and you just accomplish the task much, much quicker than you can do it on the cell phone. Okay, so language is the thing we should focus at. And uh, what are the interaction channels? So I put together here uh, as input text, speech, but also, of course, gestures and, uh, of course, because uh, you can take the cell phone, uh, put the camera on certain object and say, uh, tell me what it is, it connects to whatever is the database of images or uh, classifies it uh, using the image net, etc., etc. Et Output, again, text, voice. And for that, we need uh, microphones, cameras, etc. But uh, what is for the future and what is for... Uh, our research or our work in this area, very important that uh, I think that the future devices and cell phones and so on will combine all these uh, different channels and this kind of UI are typically called uh, multimodal. Uh, what are the interaction models? Uh, the interaction models or the interaction can be initiated uh, by uh, the intelligent assistant. Uh, this is like the alerting or suggesting. It can be initiated by the user. This is the command uh, you or the question you ask. And you enter uh, typically today into directed dialogue, which is a dialogue uh, for filling a form. So the system, and this is happening uh, in telephony mainly, is asking you questions. You are answering questions, completing forms, and then some action, uh, which might be a database uh, query, is executed. Uh, the newer systems, uh, and we can uh, could put into this category also those Siri, Google Now, etc., uh, are using open dialogue approach uh, where the system basically says, uh, what can I do for you? And then you choose the question, be it command or be it question. Uh, certainly there are other uh, categorizations like mixed initiative where uh, the one who is leading the dialogue, dialogue uh, or, or the, the, the entities leading the dialogue are changing. So sometimes the engine is uh, doing uh, disambiguation and sometimes uh, you are asking the engine. Disambiguation is a task when you ask the agent, uh, I'd like to fly to New York tomorrow and uh, you didn't say uh, which uh, air agency or to which airport or first class, second class, uh, what time, uh, etc. So uh, today uh, in a voice center there is a lady which is doing the uh, intelligent interface to a screen where there are all these uh, lines and this lady is asking you and filling in the things. There are already many systems uh, trying to automate this and do it without agents because agents are making mistakes and uh, sometimes do not work as precisely as engine or as machines can do, but still uh, it's not 
100% perfect or it uh, does not work always so there is all, uh, and people are always seeking to get uh, to human beings so uh, these are interfaces which we call conversational and there uh, there is topic changing i'll skip that so as not to go to, uh, 5 minutes okay user models uh, so what is very important to make these applications smart is uh, to create or to use context which is location time history which is what we have been clicking before future our calendar uh, the machine knows what is our next meeting it tells us where is the best how is what is the best way to get to the location uh, then uh, user profile so if you go to google or to any site today they ask you immediately to fill in the profile so as they can use it uh, then I would mention, or has been already mentioned before, the affected, not, not effective, affective computing. User model context uh, is uh, also of the external type, which are, uh, which is an input from sensors. I think that in a few years in this room will be plenty of sensors and everybody who enters the room uh, will be capable from uh, their cell phones to uh, do certain tasks at least to for example to read what is the temperature uh, what is the humidity and some of the chosen ones may turn on the light or turn off the projector <laughs> Uh, then uh, private information which we do not have access to and it, this is what the cell phone t uh, operators are uh, all the time collecting on their servers uh, this, these are our credit card transactions our utilities bills and so on and this is leading us to a very important issue and it is privacy because uh, if you are in a hotel and you'd like to have a coffee, uh, you get to a concierge and you say, uh, okay, I feel like to have a nice cup of coffee, where is the best coffee shop nearby? And this way you are already sharing some part of uh, your privacy or some part of your uh, private thoughts with this, that person and uh, we have to ask ourselves how much of this information uh, we can share or we wish to share with our assistants and uh, to uh, get uh, to the final or there is no final it's everything is evolving but uh, to make assistants uh, which are very useful uh, we uh, have to create a kind of uh, super trust relationship with these devices because uh, to accomplish what I before said like call Uber uh, the echo from Amazon must know where it is located and has to know other details uh, which are required to uh, call uh, the taxi uh, to your house so that's a very important issue which we have to have always in mind uh, doing uh, uh, or, uh, pro or designing uh, assistance. So the intelligent personal assistants are, and here I am coming to the topic of this conference, uh, one of the best examples where many uh, different kinds of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence are required. Here is a list, uh, I won't read it, most of you uh, probably know, and it's NLU and uh, uh, lots of other things. Uh, I'd like to uh, point out uh, the two basic architectures. Uh, we have seen in the Microsoft presentation already a framework for creating rule-based system. It's not only rule-based system, there is certain machine learning, but uh, uh, it's the first step of or first kind of uh, assistance uh, which are built uh, very easily and any one of you uh, can try it and that's the basis of the M agent on uh, Facebook uh, where they use the uh, slightly different approach than Microsoft but uh, it's uh, very similar and then there is the statistical approach uh, which is required to actually answer more complex questions 
so the very basic system, uh, which is uh, similar to what has been described, is uh, something which works on the uh, on the entity extraction, intent detection, normalization, and execution paradigm, where the intent detector is probably uh, the most interesting part of it, and it is based on uh, sentence pair scoring, which is an algorithm used in many different fields of uh, uh, AI today. And here is uh, some a uh, better system which would allow us to uh, answer a uh, uh, factoid question and it's already based on statistical, statistical approach and actually uh, the, the graph or the uh, flowchart which I am showing here is a flowchart uh, from the system we have built uh, at our factory and it's called uh, Yoda QA and the main uh, leader uh, Peter Baudish is sitting here in the first row and uh, this system is uh, uh, in open source uh, you can go to uh, you can go to github and look it up for yourself we have running demos uh, on the zero minutes okay so another two minutes <laughs> So we have a live demo on the web. We also have uh, a, an Android application which you can download. We have several applications of the first type which can be, uh, which can be sort of front end to this more uh, complicated system or more advanced system. Certainly all is using uh, speech record and the next thing is, uh, here are some sample of the questions uh, you can use, those which are in bold work, those which are not in bold. This is a future work. And uh, here, is, uh, some, here are some uh, steps uh, you need to take uh, to generate system like this. Uh, the only thing I probably would mention is uh, the evaluation, uh, which is really very tricky because uh, whatever deals, be it speech recognition or image processing, whatever deals with people is uh, very tricky. We don't know what is right and what is not right. And uh, once we get to the uh, smaller percentage points, everything is uh, very tricky. What's the future? The future is fantastic. We have a lot of work to do. It has been mentioned uh, with the previous or the previous speaker uh, mentioned uh, lots of different uh, areas, ideas, directions, <coughs> and uh, the assistants, of course, uh, need to work in this direction too. So here are some lines, and probably uh, the most uh, uh, the most uh, important. Uh, Think, uh, which I'd like to uh, conclude the presentation with is that uh, recently uh, many articles on the web appeared that uh, uh, intelligent assistance will ma might be used as a unified user interface for the future uh, cell phone uh, UIs uh, because uh, you know that uh, iPhone has been introduced in 2007 and since then uh, all the cell phones are the same uh, there is no big change and typically the user interface when we look to the history has been changing every uh, 10 years so okay I'm finishing so this is it <laughs> this is the prediction from Gartner <laughs> all right No question. Okay. okay, I'd like to ask one question. Okay. What do you think will be the next step in artificial intelligence? Next step in artificial intelligence? Yes. That's a, a very tricky question because, uh, as has been mentioned recently, there was like 30% improvement in these uh, cognitive uh, sciences, which is image and uh, speech record. But uh, what we uh, still don't have is uh, 
and the uh, adaptability of these things or any combinational abilities uh, which you build, build up. We have some uh, better or more accurate input to system uh, which can, based on this dual reasoning and uh, based on reasoning, uh, solving more complex problems. If we, for example, try to answer a question like uh, what is the uh, best post university with the cheapest tuition uh, teaching databases on the west coast. Forget it. Uh, none of the system would be able to do it because there is a lot of work behind it. Even if we translate or if we convert the speech to text uh, precisely, uh, there is still uh, a lot of work uh, to uh, answer questions of this type or to any reasoning or to understand what's going on in the society to model how people uh, think and I am not mentioning uh, the creative ability of people like art, uh, writing novels or uh, creating news or uh, there are so many things, you know, we are really, really at the beginning. Thank you.